Hi guys, so Heidi here. Um, I want to take you through getting this pattern into repeat that I'm actually working on for a project right now. So quick backstory, this pattern I bought from patternbank.com. It's a great resource. You can buy um, designs for about 50 bucks each and you can use them to go actually into production. I think up to 12,000 units. So this is for one of my clients and I took the pattern initially with um, as it was but I wound up um, so you can see it's just a JPEG that I bought um, and I loved it but I wanted to put it into vector format and create it using specific colors. So I went through image trace and cleaned it up down to, I think I reduced it down to about eight colors. Um, and now I'm over here and I'm working on getting it into repeat um, because it did not come in repeat. Now, luckily by image tracing the whole thing, I was able, um, you'll have to bear with me, the file is quite large and takes a few minutes to process, which is something I'm gonna talk about in this tutorial, is um, how to kind of get this to speed up when you're working with a really large um, amount of anchor points, which is essentially what's happening in here. So within the repeat, um, I already have it turned into a pattern, but you can see, uh, let's see, I'll have to find it in here. There's parts of it that you can see the edge pretty clearly and I don't like the way it looks. So I'm cleaning up the edges so that the, re okay, there it is. Um, so see right here, you can see that line, okay, where it seams up and it looks really bad. And the reason, mostly why, um, it did get like really sort of, chunky and kaleidoscope feeling, which I really like, but um, I did add a white outline to everything to just help lighten it up. And um, I'm gonna fix some of this. It's a little bit too heavy black in here. And then I'm trying to get rid of this white line. So with my pattern selected, I come over to my swatches panel and here's the pattern right down here in the bottom. I double click on that to get into pattern editing mode, which takes a second. Again, there are a lot of anchor points in this artwork, and so that's why it's going a little bit slow. So I'm gonna show you some cool tricks. Okay, so once I'm in pattern editing mode, um, here's my pattern options panel. You can pull that up under the window dialog if it's not coming, the window drop down if it's not coming up automatically. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the copies from three by three to one by one. So this instantly is gonna reduce the amount of sort of energy it's taking my computer to render the pattern and for me to see it on screen. And you might think, oh, well, if you reduce it to one by one, you can't see the edge of the repeat. You can kind of turn it on and off and it's pretty easy to see once we get in there what actually needs to be edited. So um, now it's still, taking a little bit of time. The next thing that I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna minimize the pattern options panel, is I'm gonna go into outline mode. So I'm just gonna choose view outline. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna show me the outline of all of the paths instead of the actual artwork. This can help speed things up tremendously when you're working with um, really heavy artwork and artwork that has a lot of anchor points. So what I can see, I actually already cleaned up the right hand side and I need to clean up the bottom. You had, can see I did a few pieces but I didn't really um, get it quite to where it needed to be. So along the right hand side, what I did is I just took some of these motifs and I dragged them out. And let me turn it off of outline mode so you can see, right? So the shortcut for outline mode is just command or control Y. Okay, so you can see that I've only actually sort of fixed one side of the artwork. If we zoom out and we look at the left side, it's still a really flush edge. And the reason is because um, I had, just did an image trace from this, right? Which is a straight edge JPEG. And so the results of my image trace came out with a really hard edge. And I wanna kinda soften that so you don't see it so much in the repeat. So um, you only really have to fix one side on either the right or the left and either the top or the bottom. And you can easily tell what, you, what side you need to fix when you look at it in actual repeat. So let's just jump back in here and turn our copies back onto three by three so we can actually see the repeat. And um, when your pattern tiles tile up, 
you know, one tile has to kind of overlap the other tile. So it's just a matter of which side is overlapping which. And in this instance, um, so another note I'll make in the pattern uh, options panel here is that you can see how much this is like chugging on my computer. It's very cranky. But in the pattern options panel here, you can see um, I have my copies dimmed to 50%. So I can easily see what's a copy and what's the actual artwork. So that being said, I can see that the all these little petal motifs that I'm kind of pulling and overlapping are overlapping on this side. So this artwork overlaps here as opposed to if I come over to the other side of the pattern, you can see these motifs here go underneath. And so the same is true for the top and the bottom. So I know that the artwork on the bottom goes over the artwork on the top, um, right? You can, if you think about like, if you had pieces of paper that you were tiling together and there was a slight overlap, one has to be on top of the other. So that's kind of how you think about this with your pattern tiles. So that being said, if we look at the bottom here, um, let's go ahead and turn the preview off so that this will go a little faster, okay? So this will help speed up the process a tremendous amount. Um, if you're working with complex artwork, as I said earlier, drop this down to one by one copy. And we, um, once you know if you need to mess with the top or the bottom of the artwork on the right or the left side, make sure you're manipulating the right side. Um, you can actually change that in the pattern options uh, panel to define which side overlaps which, and that's right here in the overlap section. So this is whether the right or the left or the top or the bottom overlap. So if you edit the wrong side, you can change that there. But that being said, uh, we'll jump back into outline mode. Okay, and we can very clearly see that running along the bottom, I have all these harsh blunt edges and that's what's creating that white line through my repeat and that's what I wanna fix. So the way I'm gonna fix this is just using the pencil tool. Um, this is a new feature in the pencil tool. I think it came out in CS6. I, ha I can't um, tell you for sure, uh, but I think it came out in CS6. So with the pencil tool, you can kind of reshape objects as you kind of draw on top of them. So what I mean by that is um, I'm gonna grab the pencil tool and then I'm just gonna hold the command or control key on a PC. And as I hover over any individual paths, I can select them. By holding the command or the control key, it temporarily changes my cursor from the pencil tool to the selection tool, which then allows me to select the path that I wanna edit. And I'm gonna take the pencil tool and I'm simply gonna kind of reshape this. And so that's one of the new features in the pencil tool. As I said, I think it was in CS6, but I can't be for sure. It might be in CC. Um, anyhow, so I just move along with the pencil tool, hold the command or control key to select each of the paths, and then I'm kind of just reshaping these. And so what that's doing is it's really softening those blunt edges. And when I turn this um, back into preview mode and I turn um, my uh, pattern tile preview back to three by three, we can easily see that this is gonna seam up much nicer um, along the edge and I won't have that harsh white line going through this. So this is a really great trick if you're working with artwork that doesn't have to be super precise. If you were doing something really, really accurate, you would probably, uh, you'd probably wanna do some of your reshaping with the pen tool, um, but depending, you can just sort of do this with the pencil tool. The other thing I will show you is that with the pencil tool, you can double click on it and you can change the fidelity. So if you want the path to be super, super smooth, you can bump that up here. If you want it to be really accurate, you can bump it all the way down. So I'll just show you if I, if I bump it down there and I draw, redraw this path, it's gonna draw a very accurate path as to what I drew with the mouse or the Wacom tablet, whatever I'm working with. Now that creates a lot of extra anchor points, which is actually not what I want. Um, I don't need, you know, these are fairly organic smooth paths, so I don't need that. I was working with it right in the middle and that worked pretty well. If I bumped it up to here, it would be really, really smooth um, and might be not as accurate as I need. So the middle setting for this specific project is absolutely sufficient. So um, I'm just kind of running along the bottom here and massaging these to create the nice repeat.
Okay, so now that I have that, what looks like it should be sufficient, um, it's a really busy abstract pattern, and so I don't think I need to go too crazy. Oh, I kind of missed this beginning part, so let's fix that. Um, but now I'm just going to turn my preview back on, and I'm going to see how the repeat seems up, and I think it's probably going to be pretty good. So um, I'm going to save first because I already crashed once on this artwork. So let me just save this. Um, and when you save, it'll bump you back out of pattern uh, editing mode and it will also take your preview off. So that's fine. I mean, I do still have my pattern. Where are you? There you are. And I'll just come back over to my swatches panel. Um, and I'll double click on that swatch again to jump back into pattern editing mode that will uh, bring me back in here and once it has time to sort of bring up the artwork I will change the copies back to three by three so I can see and I like um, having this dim option because sometimes you want to see where the edge is and sometimes you don't so initially I'm going to leave the dim on so that I can come down to the bottom here and I'm going to zoom in. Now I know right there is where my repeat is because of the dim. I'm going to turn that off and minimize this. And I'm going to kind of look through here and see. There's a few spots I might want to fix, but it's much better than what we had before. Yeah, I do still want to go in and fix some of these lines. Um, but it's much better than what we had before. Yeah, I can still see some of them pretty clearly. But it was much quicker than trying to fight through this with the preview on. And um, using the pencil tool, I was really easily able to get the pattern in to repeat and smooth out the edges. So that's where I'll stop for today. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye, everybody. So Heidi here.